How's it going, fams and famettes? Gerjags are here, and I have a box. As you can see, it's my routine cast cards order. And somebody thankfully put a hole in this box this time. They must have known that I needed a box. So, what do we have here? Hmm, I don't know. Well, first of all, we've got paper. So that's good. We have a literal booster box of Mystical Magus, the Vanguard set, because he was cheap and I wanted to open a booster box of this game. So I haven't opened a box worth yet. Um, we have got one Breaks the Shadow Special Edition for Yu-Gi-Oh stuffs. Uh, three lots of packs of this Soul Strike thing because it's cheap. I think because a lot of the Vanguard stuff is getting cheated because of the new set being released, so I bought a heck load of ma uh, Oh, we got some Luck and Logic packs as well, because I've never opened this card game before. But yeah, so I've got loads of um, Vanguard packs because they're really cheap. We've got Triumphant Return of the King of Knights, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. Uh, we got Demonic Lord Invasion, we've got two of those. Um, we got a Heroclix game mat uh, for Yu -Gi -Oh, the old Yu-Gi-Oh Heroclix, because I can use it in D&D. &D. I can use this in Dungeons Dragons, which is quite useful. Uh, and then we've got... oh yeah, oh sorry, there's three packs of these um, ones. And then we've got four Invasion of Vengeance, which is it for the packs, and you're like, Jex, there's still more in the box. Yeah, so we've got a miniature. Which is D and D Attack Wig, which is the Sun Elf Wizard expansion pack. Only didn't cost me that much. I must have got it for the miniature because I might use that in what's it called again? Oh yeah, I, I might use it for my um my mage in in the D and D games. And we've got a Veyatir Star set from some gold relics. I must have bought it because I look cool and they might be useful for D and D stuff. And we've got. I think it's like a hundred commons for Magic the Gathering in here. So we'll open this, and we'll have a look in the expansions to the, right now, and then we'll have the other ones in the separate videos. Yeah, for once, a Vanguard dedicated video as opposed to me shoehorning it into this. So here's number one. We've got Rona Stalwart, which is an ex, which is one of those uh, mana kit cards which has ex exert. Um, even Reed Stalker, which is a which is a four mount of water um blue with flash and flying, which is actually quite good. And things have, they're actually bringing out more stuff with flash. Um, Desert of the Indomitable, which is the only desert that I've found so, seen so far, which gives you um a colored mana as opposed to a colorless mana, which is actually really useful, since it means you can actually play oh no actual types. In a desert deck, like how do you? I guess there must be one for each attribute as well as the special ones. And yeah, because it uh, ends battlefield tap, it doesn't have an ability like most deserts do. You have even an enduring hope for the angels, a uh, wretched camel which has something to do with deserts, a uh, gigantic titan, uh, lots of cycle cards in as well. A uh, traveler's amulet. So that's a. I think we've had like various different versions of this in the past, but that's like the Amenaket version. You could see it's like the head of Anubis. That's actually really good for my um, white black deck. Uh, Seer of the Last Tomorrow, which is Narkas. Uh, Beneath the Sands, Shuffle Labor for Basic Land, which I would kind of guess is due with the deserts. Actually, no, because it's basics. So who knows? There's a lot of green stuff that searches lands as well. Uh, Without Weakness, which gives something things indestructible. Dutiful Servants. Uh, I think I have enough of those, although. I don't know. I that's the sort of stuff I use. I'm making the mummy deck, you see. Um, Desert of the Glorified, so that's the swamp version, well, the death version. Because it's not really a swamp, it's more of a, <laughs> I mean, but it looks kind of cool. Is is that, um, which god does that depict? The, the crocodile head one, I don't remember. I know it's like a female god, I think, or goddess. Act of Heroism. Ambus, um, Ambuscade. Interesting. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature and opponent control. Interesting. Uh, Grizzly Survivor, Thorned 
Malak Prowess. Whenever you creature cast a non creature spells, get plus one plus one in the other turn. Oof. Oof. In a red deck as well. Just, ah, oh, sparks. This. More damage. Oh, what? It's a, it's a 6-6. Six, six. Oh, no, what a shame. Uh, Graven Abomination. Nice. It's an artifact horror, which I'm actually making a horror deck as well. Well, horrors and demons and stuff. Uh, straight sorry, Sidewinder, which I like it because it's a 7 mana, has hexproof, and you can also cycle it for just 1 mana. Which, if you're planning on like summoning from the, the graveyard or something, is really useful. Uh, another Beneath the Sands. Ooh, here we go. Khan Eternal. Um, Zombie Jackal Warrior. Afflict. When this creature becomes blocked, depending player loses a life! Oh, damn! For a common, that's really good. Like, I don't, I'm not, might actually have to go my white black, um, zombie mummies deck, because, it, well, it's, it's basically the Meneket style of zombies, you know, all the, uh, mummies and jackals and stuff like that. We have Oaktra's Avenger, which is another e exert card. I don't really get that with the whole exertion thing. Um, we have Frontline Devastator, so this must be, like, another archetype, in a sense, where there's, like, a flicked. Can you imagine that just killing your opponent by blocking with things? How how hilarious is that? Aerial guide, um, which is flying. When it attacks, target another target attacking creature against flying. I think we've had versions of this card in the past as well. And another desert of the indomitable. Uh, frilled sand wallace. There must be like lizards as well, I suppose. Yeah, because all these lizards seem to have something to do with plossing themselves. Um, Lurching Rock Beast with Cycling, Firebrand Archer, whenever you cast an own creature spell, it deals a damage to each opponent. <laughs> we have Mana List, add one mana of any color to your ma- Whoa! Whoa! It's a three cost. You know what else used to be three costs? The, um, old key runes and stuff, which would only give you one of one of two types of mana. This says one of anything. Considering that Consulate Guildgate, which is an old card at this point, was uh, the land that did that, but it came into play tapped. This is like the Consulate Guildgate of Artifact Heroes. I like it! <laughs> Especially since I'm making an Artifact deck, which is... Which, having stuff like that is really useful, especially for the automaton ones, like Verdon, um augmenting, which all have an ability based on one type of mana, and usually costs one and a, and a couple others. I think there's one that, um, like, yeah, and it, it's, and they have various effects, but you can't really play them in the same deck unless you have stuff like that. Uh, Spell Weather Eternal, Unsummon, mostly because it's just um, inconsistent to run six different types of mana. You learn this from Slivers. Uh, desert of the Mindful, so that's the what blue desert. Another Okra's Avenger, Carrion's Creature. Defiant Kenra, which is just a standard 2 2. For 2 mana. Uh, Spell Weaver Eternal again, which has an Afflict. Uh, Solitary Camel, has lifelink as long as you control a desert or as long as there's desert in your graveyard. Interesting. Uh, Oasis Ritualist for Nagas. Oh, desert of the Fervent, so that's the fire one. Uh, lethal Sting, put an as an additional cost, put 1-1 one, one on creature control, destroy target creature. Okay then. Uh, Dauntless Avon, which is one of those... Oh, it's a, oh no, it's just a bird. Whenever it attacks, untap target creature control. Oh! <laughs> the funny thing is, it's a 3-mana creature. Bearing in mind that it doesn't say with less power, etc, etc, just any. So it's like, ah, oh, that's a shame, I have a big-ass Hydra. Whoops. Another wretched camel. Rampaging hippo. <laughs> wow, that artwork. <laughs> that, that, that hippo. That hippo needs his tusks, uh, teeth trimming. Those aren't tusks, those are teeth. Like, how, how do you even. I, I know tusks. But, because uh, tusks are more like. like They're not teeth, they're just external. They're almost like horns. But these are like teeth. How do you close your mouth, hippo? You have Desert of the True, which is the light desert, which has a pyramid, or pyra it's a pyramid sphinx of some description. Sand Blast, deals fire damage through target attacking or long bridger. <laughs> Sand Blasting. 
Uh, punk Dream Blow deals fire damage target. If it would die that turn, exile it instead. Weird. Uh, another unsummon. Torment of Venom. For 3 minus 1 on a target creature, its control loses 3 life, unless he or she sacrifices another non land permanent or discards a card. And Unquenchable Thirst. Uh, when it ends the battlefield, if you control the desert, blah blah blah, tap enchanted creature, and doesn't end tap dreams control, it's tap tap step. Ow! <laughs> it's just like, ha, you're thirsty, you can't do nothing. And we have another one as well. We have two of these, because of course we do. Mm. Mm. Ow, I think it. Tape, my mortal enemy. Ow. It's too steep. There we go. We have another uh, black land, Dauntless Avon. Ooh, Survivor's Encampment, which is a desert. Um, blah, 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 add some blank to your mana pool. Add, and tap and untap to control, add one mana any cre Oh, so that does, so that's basically the the guild gate of... Yeah, except it has a stupid cost. Steadfast Sentinel, I have so many of those. So let's, I have enough on my deck. Um, Marauding Bone Flasher. Kenra Scrapper, which is a kicker one. Oh no, it's Exertion. And with Menace, which is quite cool. Another encampment. Lurching Rock Beast. Field of Ceridon. It's a beast. When it attacks, you control does what this does. And very, very calm. Target creature can't block this turn. It's a 4-4 four, four for 5 mana. Another Thirsty Boy. Another Scrapper. Another Dupeful Servants. I think I have enough of those. Um, Lurching Rock Beast. Aerial Guide. Grave and Abomination. Nice. Another Sidewinder. Riverwinder. Beneath the Sands, Kenra Eternal, nice. Firebrand Boy, or Grill, yeah, it's a girl. Strategic Planning, uh, put top three in your... Look at top three from your library, put one into your hand in the rest of the graveyard. So, basically, Pot of Duality for magic, but not. Puncturing Blow. Unsummon. Stranger Souls, another horror. Look at that damn thing. This is something you see in a horror game. Gift of Strength. We've seen this card before. Many times. Another Traveler's Amulet. Nice. Because it searches for lands, and that's really good. I mean, for one mana, it searches a land. Well, for two mana, if you want to be specific about it. Crash through. Bridge you draw game, tremble this turn, and draw a card. For one mana. That's good. Tragic lesson. Draw two and discard a card unless you control the land and control the zone of hand. Oh shit, they killed the burb. Dead god. Punching blow. Mummy Paramount. Yay! So we have whenever another zombie enters the battlefield under control gets plus one plus one to the end of the turn. Which includes tokens. Which is very good. Uh, countervailing wins. Count the target spell unless its controller pays one for each card in your graveyard. That's just me. It's like, you could negate this, but probably not. <laughs> Gift of Strength. Carrion's Creature. The Jurist Reincarnation. Target to tap to two creatures and cycle and cycling. Feral Prowler, it's a kitty! Spellweaver Eternal, Lethal Sting, Life Goes On. You gain 4 life, we did this turn, you gain 8 instead. Another Lethal Sting, Moaning Wall, Aerial Guide, Firebrand Archer, and the Riverwinder. Another Abomination. We've got Bitter Bow Sharpshooters. Vigilance and Reach. Pretty good. Remember, brother, the eyes are always vulnerable. I 
never forgot, you stupid piece of shit. Morning bone slasher. Ooh, here is another fire lamb. The fine cur bear and spell we return excellent. Right. And now for the last cool bit of the episode is looking at this stuff. Which I do not know how to open because I do not have my scissors. Maybe I'll see if this one opens it better first, before I do anything. Maybe. You would think they would actually make me wait at opening it, wouldn't you? Mm. Ah, hang on a minute. They did! I'm stupid. So what we have here is we've got hmm. we've got some Oh they're actually you have to actually build these, okay. They're all made of like metal as well. It's all like metal pieces. So the base plates. Let's see. Wooden tokens. Fire, freeze. Shaken. I'll, I'll show you these in a second. Yeah, there's fire, freeze, shake it. damage, uh, knock down, we've got magic as well, that's cool, um, and that obviously makes all of those that you see there the uh, metal pieces. It's weird that I, I thought it had come like that. This last one will definitely need me to use something to cut through it. Uh, oh, I'm just going to read the back, you know. There's 12 cards in it, 39 tokens, 2 maneuver dials, and painted plastic creature with base and adapter. Uh, Numesta was once a naughty wizard, but she has since reformed her ways. Now she wields great power, and the will to use it responsibly. She's a strong-willed ally and one who has learned the importance and the loyalty and friendship when Ovandel, the village close to her home in the city of Silver Moon, is suddenly invaded, Nymestra flies to its aid as the Galaderos, the copper dragon leading the good dragon's quest to the primordial graveyard. Will Nymestra's power be enough to help Gal Gal Galaderos preserve the ancient keeper Ovandel from a full scale invasion? Question mark. I don't know, and I might not ever find out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video here. Don't forget to leave a like as such if you did. I'm really trying to open this box still. And maybe I'll get this open one day. And I'll tell you guys all about it. But for now, Sketchy Six signing off. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.